You're smart, you're talented, you're hardworking, and more than that, you now have a great idea that you just know could change the world, change lives, and change eternities. So the question is, do you begin to build a ministry from scratch? Or is God calling you to do something different with those gifts? One of the things that I love most about working with lay ministers who have an entrepreneurial spirit is that those type of people can look at the world and see it in all of its ugliness, its harshness, and its brokenness. And they can look at the world and say, wow, there are so many opportunities to do great good here. Ministerial entrepreneurs are the ones who can see the ugliness of the world but they don't lose hope. And more than that, these are the kind of people who usually have the gifts and talents to be able to pull it off, which is so exciting. It's exciting when you stumble across that unique idea that no one else is doing. And it's exciting when you begin to sit back and dream and realize that it's possible, that it's possible to change the world. And it's exciting when you begin to stew on it and see the practical steps that would take you to the place where that idea is no longer just a dream, no longer an intangible reality, but it's real and it's making a difference. It's an exciting time. Teresa of Calcutta had a very similar experience when she was on that train and heard God stir her heart to begin to serve the poorest of the poor. That was an exciting idea and she jumped on it right away because here's the thing. Most ideas are stillborn. They never receive the breath of life that comes through hard work, determination, and discipline that brings the idea to life. But Teresa decided that she would be different. And so she gets off that train and she immediately begins to make her idea come into action. And she does that by writing to her bishop. That was the first step that she needed to take. And she just wouldn't stop bugging the guy for a long time, month after month, letter after letter. She writes and writes and writes and writes until he gets very irritated with her. And he ultimately sends back a letter saying, I will not permit you to start this ministry until you answer these questions. And I get really pumped when I actually see the questions that I sent to her because they are the basics of any business plan that somebody would want to put into action in order to build a new enterprise. But there's one question in particular that really does stand out to me as well. He asks, is there anyone else already doing this work? Now, in the secular world, doing research before you start an enterprise or business is so important. You need to make sure that the market can support your product, that there's even a desire for the product, and to see what other people are doing so that you can know how you can make a unique contribution to the field. But ministry isn't business, so why would the bishop ask Teresa to do research before starting this ministry? And importantly, why should you also do research before taking the enormous risk of building a ministry from scratch? Let me explain why, while at the same time walking you through the steps that you need to take in order to do research on your great, awesome, world-changing idea. Step number one, do the research. The internet makes this very easy. You can also call up your local diocesan office and once you maybe find a nonprofit that has a similar initiative, you can ask them who are people also in your field who you collaborate with. And this gives you a broader base to begin to understand who is already doing something similar. Because chances are is that your unique idea isn't that unique 
hopefully other people have seen the need and also share your passion and enthusiasm for it and they're already doing great things in the world. Go find them because that will launch you into step number two. Step number two is to learn from them. Go and find out everything you can about how they do that ministry and why because chances are they've already made mistakes and learned from them. So learn from their mistakes. Learn about their style. Learn about their approach. Study the weak points in their ministry and try to figure out why are those points weak. Which then leads you into step number three. While you're studying these organizations, network with them. It, don't see them as competition. These are people who share your heart and excitement for the same mission. Get to know them, encourage them, let them encourage you. These people could end up becoming some of your biggest allies, advocates, and even collaborators. So reach out to them. Four, ask yourself this tough question because this question actually stands on the fact that a similar organization already exists and that you have a passion for their mission. Is there a possibility that God could be calling you to join their team instead of starting a ministry from scratch? because you could be an answer to their prayers. They are searching for people who love the mission and have that passion and enthusiasm. And if you already have it, maybe you're being called to help support them in what they're already doing. Five, if through prayer, you discern that God's actually calling you to start a unique ministry from scratch, then you must be able to answer the question, what is the unique contribution that this ministry is going to make to the field? For instance, maybe there's a great ministry that's halfway across the country that's doing fabulous work, but you wanna make it happen in your local area. Or maybe you think those folks have a great mission, but you wanna prioritize a different set of values or to focus on a different type of activity, event, or program. But the thing is, is when you're a bishop, or your staff or your participants or your donors come to you and ask what makes this ministry different you must be ready to tell them but more importantly i also think asking about what unique contribution the ministry can make to the world gives you a chance to really wrestle with God and come to a greater self-knowledge about the gifts and talents that he has given to you who did he create you to be it's an exciting question and it's an opportunity to grow in relationship with him. And in the end, having that great world changing idea is so exciting. And I know you probably want to get started right away. So the first step that you should begin to take is to do the research. And doing the research is not a waste of time. It helps you to tighten your idea. It helps you to build up a network of collaborators and advocates. And ultimately doing the research will help give you more ideas so that the ministry is ultimately going to be more fruitful. And don't worry about taking time for research because if this idea comes from God, he's not going to let it leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to stick with you and it's going to bug you, bug you, bug you, bug you, bug you. So go, go start doing research, do the research so you can begin to change the world, but more importantly, that you would change lives and eternities. If you have a great idea, share it with us here at the Ezra Project. We would love to be able to support and encourage you. And in the meantime, like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and I'll see you next week.